So I wasn't planning on making videos for a little while because I just came back from my vacation and I'm still like getting back into things. But I had to talk about this shit. Xbox Live, or, or sorry, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate going from $17 a month to $20 a month. And then for the annual subscription for the Game Pass Core, which is essentially what Xbox Live Gold used to be, that is going from $60 a year to $75. Yeah, I, 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 the, the conversation about Game Pass has always been, for $15 a month, you can't beat it. It's such a good deal. Now it just keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up and up. The prices keep increasing and increasing to the point where it's starting to get like, uh, is it really that great of a value? And I know most people are going to say yes because of all the games that you have on there. But it's going to get to a point where they're just going to keep increasing it and increasing it that it's going to be a lot less enticing. Now, their way of kind of softening the blow is to include a new subscription for $15 a month. So the original Game Pass Ultimate price, but it's only for console gamers and it has... Pretty much everything that it has to offer, except you don't get the day and date releases. So that's like the big thing for Game Pass. So you get all the old games and you get the paid online, but you don't get the actual new game. So Black Ops 6 you're, you would not be part of your subscription. For $15 a month, you don't get the new games, which to me I think is insane. And then the PC Game Pass, which was originally $10 a month, now it's 12 So I guess <laughs> PC gamers are still getting the best value here because there's no paid online on PC, so they don't have to worry about that. And you get almost the same amount of games, I would say. It's pretty comparable between what they offer on console and PC for Game Pass. I, I could tell you from my experience with these, with these streaming services that keep going up and up, I've had to eventually cancel some of them. Now, Game Pass, if we're talking about the game streaming market, Game Pass is above all competitors. Because what, what, what do they really have as competition right now? They have Ubisoft Plus. <laughs> they have uh, the, the EA Play isn't really competition because they have a deal with them. Game Pass Ultimate includes EA Play. GeForce Now, is that still a thing? I don't really think so. I mean, it is, but it's not very relevant. PlayStation is not really competing against them. They have the, the the games with the PlayStation Plus, but that doesn't really... It, it, it pales in comparison to what Microsoft's offering. So, right now, Microsoft's in the position where they could be like, well, we're pretty much the only game in town, so we can charge whatever the fuck we want and get away with it. But I think, it, regardless, even if there were six other services out there, Let's say Nintendo had theirs, Sony had theirs, and everyone had like their own streaming and subscription service going. I think it would still, it, it's just gonna, they're just gonna keep <laughs> charging more and more for it. And I don't know if people are gonna, I mean, the, the whole thing is not sustainable. That's the problem. And it's something I've been talking about for a very long time is that this model, you know, with what they're paying to get all these games on there. And, the, you know, the day and date releases, they're, they're losing out on game sales as a result. They have to do one of two things. They either have to scale back on what they're offering or they have to increase prices or, you know, probably both. Realistically, they're going to do both because Game Pass is still not profitable. They still have not turned a profit. That's something that people forget and don't want to acknowledge. It's been around for so long. People talk about the success of Game Pass. And, you know, eventually, will it be profitable? I believe it will. Just like Netflix. For the first, like, 10-plus years of Netflix's existence, they had not yet turned a profit. But now, you know, because they've established themselves, and they were really the first game in town, and they just kept building themselves up, they're one of the very few streaming services out there that is actually profitable. I think the only other one is Disney+. Plus. Everything, everyone else is losing money. Paramount, Peacock, Max, they're all in the red. So, you know, it's, it's, some, it's interesting how the industry keeps changing over the years. I think, you know, within, within the next few years, it's, it's going to be just like the TV and movie industry where you're just going to have so many different fucking services that you're not really saving money. If you pay for all of them, you're not saving money compared to just buying the games individually, honestly. And, you know, that's where we're headed now. But, yeah, the whole paid online thing is just bullshit. Like, that, that, that's a whole other conversation. 
I've talked about it for so many years about console gamers just just, just paying for online multiplayer without question. And, and Sony, they they raised it from like sixty to eighty dollars recently. Microsoft's raising it from sixty to seventy five just for the paid online and nothing else. But realistically, it's I mean it's a greedy thing and it's a horrible thing. And I'm probably not gonna pay the twenty dollars a month. I'll tell you that. Because I would pay the, the 17 and be like, eh, whatever, and, and then use the Microsoft Rewards points for, from Bing to make up the difference, sort of. So I don't really pay that much, but if they, like, increase the amount, like, for the Microsoft Point Redemption and also, yeah, the $20 a month is just way too much. Because if you do 20 times 12, uh, shit, I don't want to do math, but that's over $200 a year. $240 a year, I believe. So, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. If you do the math, 60, 120, I'm sorry, it's it's now 70. <laughs> 70, 140, 210. That's like three and a half brand new games a year. So if you play three and a half new Microsoft games a year anyway, without paying the subscription, then I guess it's worth it. And then as far as all the old games and stuff go, I mean... They're so cheap anyway. I mean, they're always on sale for like two dollars <laughs> on the summer sale and shit. So I don't really know. I I, I don't really know if it, if Game Pass is as great as a value as everyone says it is. To be honest, I mean, in some ways it, it's good, in some ways it's not. But it's just it, it's starting to get to the point now where it's starting to make a lot less sense to to have the subscription. It really is. Uh, it, but also people are willing to pay it. It's like w when they raised the games from sixty to seventy dollars, the games didn't get better. The quality of the games didn't get better when they raised the prices and everything like that. Uh, same thing with PlayStation Plus going up. It's funny, the PlayStation service was actually a lot better and more stable when it was free on the PS3 than on the PS4 and PS5. I remember on the PlayStation 4, I just had so many times where the like I wanted to go online and the fucking shit was down for maintenance or some bullshit was going on. Or I couldn't even, like, load up the PlayStation Store, couldn't load up trophies, couldn't load up all these fucking things. And, and you know, with it being a paid subscription, it was actually worse. So, yeah, it, it's, it's just because people are gullible and they're, will, they're just going to pay it no matter what. If they if they said we're going to charge $25 a month, the, people are probably still going to pay it too. So, that falls on the consumer, honestly, more than the company being greedy or whatever. It's, it's because they know they can get away with it and that's why they're doing it.